Hello, everyone, and welcome to our PSLE English Language Revision Series. I'm Mr. Liao, and today I'm going to share with you some of the things to take note of for situational writing. All right, before we begin, be in a comfortable and quiet environment for learning. So it means putting away your mobile devices, anything that may distract you. And the second will be to have a notebook with you to take down notes or attempt the examples along the way. There wouldn't be much examples here in this uh, in this sharing that I'm going to uh, that I'm giving today. So, but uh, it'd be good for you to take note of some of the learning points, all right, that you have picked up along the way. All right. Without further ado, let's begin. All right. Today's menu. Today I'm going to share with you this uh, four five areas in this uh, five blue boxes. Okay. So we're going to look at the steps for approaching situational writing, the rules, and uh, how do you close uh, the closure for situational writing. Uh, and we'll be looking at a one case, case study and also some expectations when you are attempting your writing <laughs> exercise. <laughs> All right. OK, first thing that I'm going to go through with you is your steps for doing situational writing. Very important is that you need to identify the purpose the purpose is very important and it's always, always, always found in the question stem. All right. So in your question itself, you need to highlight the purpose. Uh, why are you writing to this person? That is very important. That's the most important thing you need to think of. Then the next thing you need to ask yourself, is it a formal or informal letter? Are you writing to a friend or are you writing to someone you do not know? Are you writing to an authority figure? Are you writing to an adult perhaps? All right. And of course, naturally, that will lead to your salutation and signing off. How do you close? How do you how do you end off your your letter or to your email? And how do you sign off? Very important. Okay, so based from the text, ask yourself whether it's a formal or informal letter. So formal, uh, very common. You see the use of model verbs. Uh, you could uh, I. I would uh, advise you not to do this. I would advise, uh, I hope that I could get a reply from you. I could, I would, I should. So these are the model verbs that you will see very common in formal letters. There's a respectful tone. Okay, I do not say that. I think that you must punish this person. Okay, instead I will say that uh, perhaps you might uh, wish to look into this matter. Uh, I hope that you could look into this matter. Ah, respectful tone. All right, and you have a surname, okay? And you acknowledge the recipient's title. So you do not just say, uh, call that person by the by the name, if it's a principal they're writing to. Okay, to a principal you say, dear Mrs. Ng, dear Mr. Tan, okay? So on and so forth. Informal, a use of punctuations are more friendly and concerned tone. So you definitely many times I advise my students. You can start off with dear, dear Timothy, how are you? Very informal. You wouldn't write to a manager of the of McDonald's, you know, dear manager of McDonald's, how are you? No, when you're writing in formal letters, you go straight to the point of your purpose. Dear manager of McDonald's, I am writing to you with regards to. Uh, do you, do, you, do you hear the difference in the tone? All right. Salutation and signing off. Salutation uh, means that the person's, you need to write that, make sure you mention that person's name and the title in the letter. And always check that you have the right name and gender. Okay, you do not change the Mr. to Mrs., Mrs. to Mr. All right. If you know the relationship and uh, you're signing off, you can sign off your student. Uh, your prefect, if you're writing to a discipline master, or your cousin, your friend, all right? That will be very easy to remember. If you do not know the person, yours faithfully. If you know the person for for formal letters, you write yours sincerely, okay? I say, I say again so that it's not confusing for you. Huh? Look at where I'm pointing to with my cursor. If uh, for formal, uh, your student, if you're writing to a discipline master, it's a formal letter. So your prefect. If you know that person, for example, you know this, uh, you know the principal, you can also use your sincerely to the prefect master. You can also write your sincerely. But if you do not know that person, for example, again, I quote the manager of McDonald's, dear Mr. 
Mr. Lee, okay, if Mr. Lee is the manager of uh, McDonald's, then you sign off as yours faithfully, all right? And make sure that you, when you're writing formal letters, include your surname, all right? So I'll write down my my full name, okay, Liao Zhongfa, okay, but if you are, if you are John, you wouldn't just write John for, uh, for formal letters, you write John Tan, perhaps, all right? So look for the names, uh, who is this person who is writing the letter. That's very important as well. Okay, purpose. Refer under your task. Just now I mentioned to you, it's a bold line. Okay, so highlight. That's what I usually encourage my students to do. Highlight the, the task that you are supposed to do. Who are you? Why are you writing this person? Why are you writing? That's very important. Okay, better to paraphrase. Uh, for example, if you are writing a formal, I am writing to inform you. Okay, so this is uh, how uh, how you should phrase a formal letter. Okay, in informal letter, you can also um, write in such a way, but it sounds a little bit too formal. So, uh, for example, if I'm writing to a friend, Dear Jane, uh, how are you? I've not seen you for a very long time. By the way, I would like to invite you to my birthday party. Ah. So you wouldn't say, I'm writing to inform you that I'll be having a birthday party. Unless, of course, you've got the king or queen. Okay, you do not write like that. And specify the time, place, or name of events. And usually that is required in the bullet points uh, stated in your task, task box. All right? Okay, hopefully you have digested what I've shared with you so far. So I'm going to talk about the rules. Okay, the purpose, very important. You ask yourself, when you're writing to this person, is it an invitation? Is it a complaint? Is it a compliment? It means that you want to praise someone. Or is it a request for help? And who is this that you're writing to, the audience? Is it a teacher, a friend, a project member, a cousin, librarian, principal? It affects the tone. If I'm writing to, just now I quoted you the example, right? So it depends on who I'm writing to, my tone will be different. So does your bullet point cons considers the context? So very important that uh, you look at the, the points that's, that's uh, listed down, right? Do not just answer all, the, all of the four or five points, all right? Rearrange your uh, sentences such that they flow in a good sequence, all right? So for example, if you are inviting someone to the party, you tell the person what the party is about, then you give the dates. You do not give the date first, then you tell them, say that, oh, this is the party. So the sequence is important as well. Take note, that is a one hour and 10 minutes paper. So my advice to students is to not spend more than 15 minutes to do your situational writing, okay? You're not writing a love letter. You're not writing a long letter to someone, okay? So just keep it short, sweet, concise, so that you have more time to work on your uh, continuous writing. Okay, bullet points. So if you are using bullet points, label your bullet points. Okay, uh, three paragraphs. Uh, you, so you take note that you should always have just three paragraphs. At most four if your middle paragraph is a little bit long. Okay, the first paragraph will be the opening, the purpose. Why are you writing to this person? Okay, then the body will be the contents. What is this about? Then the ending is the closure. So the closure usually it echoes the purpose. So it just uh, like how your teacher when they start to tell you about today's lesson today I'm going to do this with you at the end the teacher say this is what we have learned so far and uh, hopefully you have uh, you, have, you, you, you saw how we, we talk through this whole thing All right so it's an echo of the purpose maybe it may be rephrased so information must be specific accurate and complete so um, fishing out notes versus picking up notes this example, if I say that uh, I was in a, uh, when I was, uh, uh, when I was in, I think this was a past year practice paper, I saw this student fishing out notes from the pond because she has actually dropped it in versus picking up notes. Uh, there's a difference, you know, the action. So use what has been given in the, in the context, in the pictures, okay, to help you to be most, to be uh, more accurate in your answers. Helping a blind man versus accompanying a blind man to cross the road. Uh, there's a difference. Uh, if I just accompany and I help, there's a difference. Don't change the meaning. Cut the queue versus cut the queue when he was first in line. 
Ah, there's a change in the meaning. When you're facing Lan you need to cut the queue. Alright? So the expectations is that all the six points listed, okay, there will be five to six marks. The five points, if you if you listed down the five points, right, there will be three to four marks. If you have four or below points, that's when you missed out. Four or below, you only get one or two marks. So as long as you're able to hit those six points, right, you'll be able to get the five to six marks. All right. So I want to talk a little bit about closure. So it depends on the purpose. Many of uh, my students, right, they find it very hard to write the last sentence. So it's based on the purpose, who you are writing it to. So the comp so I'll give you some examples of closure for complaints. This will be the third paragraph. I hope the information that I've given you will help you as the what? As the uh, as the principal or as a dis discipline master to decide on the next course of action for the benefit of the students. So, okay, it's a bit lengthy. So if I were to keep it really short, I hope that the information that I've given you will help you uh, with your next course of action. Okay, keep it simple. Or if it's a request, then I say, we will really, I would really appreciate if you could re give me a reply by when? Ah, compliments. That means that you will write in to praise a student or praise someone and say, I believe that what this person has done is commendable and shows uh, 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 commendable character. It'd be wonderful if you can compliment him by sharing this uh, with your staff. Okay, sharing what he has done with the staff. Thank you. All right, so how, what do you want? My, a very simple question is that what do you want the person receiving this letter to do with your letter? All right, sometimes they need an action, then you write down what you would like this person to do. Of course, you need to pay attention to the tone, all right? If not, if it's just a compliment, then you say that I believe it's very commendable and I hope that you praise him for what he has done. All right, so let's look at uh, two case studies. Dear Mr. Tan, I'm writing to inform about an incident that happened on 26 September 2018 at our school canteen. So, so it's telling us about the purpose. What's the purpose? An incident. During recess time, while I was on duty, I saw Gina cutting John's queue in the canteen. Based from what, based on what I heard, John was unhappy for two reasons. Firstly, he was first in line when Gina cut his queue. Secondly, John nearly landed on the floor because Gina pushed him. However, instead of apologizing, Gina denied and accused John of lying. I immediately approached them to stop the quarrel. I hope the information I provided is enough for you as the discipline master to decide on the next course of action. Thank you. Your prefect, Peter Liu. Pretty clear, right? So the first paragraph has the purpose, when it happened. Okay, in fact, the dates and all this, right, I could also leave it in the second paragraph because there's a content. So the content, it did tell us a very clear sequence of what has of what took place. And then the closure, it asked Mr. Tan, what Mr. Tan, as the discipline master, what he would want to do about this information, all right? Second one. Dear Ms. Tan, I'm writing to inform about an incident that happened on 26 September 2018 at 10.15 a.m. I was the prefect on duty during recess. In front of the noodle store, Gina went in in front of John. Gina also pushed John away. As a result, John was unhappy that Gina pushed her. Gina said that he was hungry and John accused her of pushing him down to the floor. I hope that as discipline master, you will take charge of the incident. Thank you. Yours faithfully, Peter Parker. So what's the difference now? This student, yes, so yeah, okay, the purpose is clear. I'm writing about an incident that happened. Uh, what about here this time? I think the timing, you can leave it really at the second paragraph for the contents. So in this, in this, uh, the way the student has uh, phrased the second paragraph, right, is that it's just listing down what happened one after another. So do you really need to tell Miss Tan that she was hungry? What has this got to do with the incident itself? Okay, I hope that as the discipline master, you will take charge of the incident. You better do your job, huh, Miss Tan? <laughs> so cannot, we must make sure that your tone is polite. Let's track back a little bit to see what student A did. I hope that the information I provided is enough for you as the discipline master to decide on the next course of action. Thank you. Ah, do you see there's a difference in the tone? Yeah. So, ah, also you can notice from student A, he, used, he or she used connectors like however, secondly, firstly, 
So this actually gives, tells you the sequence of events. Uh, so between A and B, which one will be your preferred? Uh, preferred uh, letter? <laughs> okay, uh, hopefully it's A. Uh. All right, so A is more precise, the tone is clearer. And of course, the last error here, yours faithfully. Yours faithfully, you only use it for someone that you do not know. So you should either use your prefect or yours sincerely because this is someone that you know. And this person did uh, write formal letter. Yes, you didn't just write Peter. You will actually sign up as Peter Parker with the full name. All right. Okay. So today I've gone to review the steps, the rules, how you do closure. We look at case studies and some of the expectations for situation writing. I hope that this has helped you. Um, have a little bit clearer understanding of how to approach situational writing. Hopefully there are some tips that you picked up along the way. If you don't, don't worry. Practice makes perfect, or rather practice will make you better. All right, always adopt a growth mindset in everything that you do. That's all for today. All the best and see you around. Bye-bye.